welcome to the Orchid Saga. My name is Elkin Wiersma, but ATA is uh, fine as well because a lot of people uh, found some difficulties uh, writing and pronouncing my name. So I thought, you know what, ATA is fine from uh, now on as well uh, it, because it's a little bit easier. Anyhow, uh, thank you so much for uh, joining me here in this video. This is going to be a second uh, massive family opsis repot. So if you are into, into the fails uh, like me, uh, this is probably a video you're going to uh, like as well. Maybe you saw my uh, first one where I did the first massive, uh, massive uh, repot. Um, I think a lot of people like that video. So I thought, you know what, I'm going to do a second one because I at least need to repot 10 of them and I think uh, a few more. But you will see if they really need a repot. For me, that is most of the times if they're really hanging uh, next to their pots, which happens because I have them on a wall, they really like to grow out of their pots. If they, uh, the new roots cannot reach the, the media anymore, I will do a repot on them. So, uh, but I will see what, uh, what, I, uh, what I will uh, find here in this case, but I think at least 10 of them. So I'm not going to uh, make this a very long video. I try, so I will uh, do several, uh, several parts. I will speed up uh, uh, because yeah, otherwise it will take way too, uh, too uh, much time, of course. But anyhow, because the first one uh, received quite some views and quite some good comments, I thought I'm going to do another one. So uh, let's start, let's start uh, repotting uh, some fails. So I uh, did uh, get the first fail. Well, you can see this one could use a uh, repot and there goes the tag. It doesn't have a name, but I give it a uh, name. Well, actually, this is uh, Family Opsis Cornelis. That's the name of my husband and he gifted me this one. So that's why it's uh, carrying his name. And yeah, this one is doing very well. And I thought before we're going to take it out, I just want to give you an up close up of uh, what I try to do with aerial roots. I try to stick them in between the uh, inner pot and the outer pot. So you already get uh, water roots. Those will uh, certainly adapt to the new system, even though in most cases these do as well. But I like to uh, have some just for you never know. And then you can see this one doesn't fit in this pot anymore. It, and this is why, because, whoops, I hope you can see it. There it comes, look at that. A heck of a lot of roots. One is even stuck to the outer pot. So I will uh, take it out of uh, on the table, but just to let you see up close. Let's get it over here because now it's going to get a little bit heavy. <laughs> and I have my second camera on to make things a little bit uh, easier to watch up close. Um, yeah, like I said, one root is stuck. It did grab hold of the, yeah, there it goes. Well, actually it was another one, two of them. So let's put a pot over there. And yeah, we have a heck of a lot of roots. So that is beautiful, of course. But also these were the roots that were already on there when I did repot it. Uh, quite some years back. Let me quickly check. Uh, 2020 it was. So uh, yeah, three years back it had these roots on. So I need to take those off. But how are we going to do that? Because it has so many roots there. Um, yeah, I think I'm going firstly going to take it out of the pot. It makes it a bit easier. And yes, with the other ones, I'm going to speed it up a bit more because otherwise it will take uh, too much time, of course. But anyhow, here we go. Let's, uh, let's see what we find in a pot. Some older roots that are dead, that was to be expected. But, and also one root is really stuck to the pot. I never had it happen. This root here, there it goes. Really was uh, holding on to the pot. Let me put it here onto the sink and let's have a look. So that water meter can come out. I can reuse that. Not with the same orchids, but without a one. So yeah, we have some dead roots, as you can see. But yeah, like I said, that's to be expected. They dumped their older roots, so that's uh, not a big deal. And this one has a lot of new ones and good ones, as we just saw. So let me uh, clear this up. 
a bit. And let's have a look inside of here. I feel some dry roots here as well, yes. They, yeah, those can come off. This one is still a bit gray, but it does feel uh, dry. So I'm going to take those off. We have a few here. These are very papery. <laughs> so very old. But that's a good sign. Because that means it's, uh, the orchid is getting older. <laughs> and yeah. You can go. If you want to. Well, you actually have to. Don't want to put up these older roots, of course. Too much. So there we go. And then I'm going to lift it. And this one is making a new spike. Let me yes, show it to you guys. It's over here, just above my finger. And that's okay. This one is going to back in the same setup, so it will not uh, affect the spike too much. That's okay. But I need to look out for it, not to break it, of course. That would be a shame. This one has beautiful blooms. It's a no ID, but still I like them. So yeah, you can see if I would uh, do this in real time with all of them, we would be here quite a while. So I took uh, some time today to do this and it may uh, actually uh, cost me several hours and I'm happy to uh, put that amount of time in because yeah, they really deserve it. I mean, if they grow so well for you, even if they didn't, I would uh, take my time of course, but still, yeah. And this one is uh, for three years in this pot, so yeah. It's really, if you look at, at, at the amount of time it was in the pot, it just now takes a little bit time to clean it up, but that's it. If it's happy, it can stay in the pot for uh, years. And again, that is why I really, really like to grow them in inorganic media. It's so beautiful. Even though, as you can see, there's a lot of pumice just falling off. Some roots did attach to it, but not as much as with the Leca I found. And uh, that's for me a bonus. They really enjoy their pumice, but they're not really uh, grabbing hold on to it. As you can see, we have a few pieces over here. If, uh, yeah, they're in my frame. But those were on the old roots that died off, so I can take them off. But you can see, not much. Not with all orchids, don't get me wrong. Some do uh, really at get attached to the pumice, but yeah, it does fall off quite easily, actually. But they do grow so well in it for me. Absolutely, I love it. So for repotting, it's it's very easy. And inorga in a, inorganic, I'm sorry, uh, media is always fair, uh, very easy to repot in, if you ask me, if you don't... You don't have to take it off because it's inorganic, of course. Yeah, and that's what I like. So we don't have to mess up the root system as much. If this one was in bark, oh my God. <laughs> that would be... I couldn't do 10 of them in one day for sure if they would grow in, if I would grow them in bark. But I'm not saying that it's not working, of course, but for me, this is, I like this just a bit better. Meanwhile, we are getting there, you guys. I hope this is not too boring, but it needs to be done. And you will probably will see that I leave some on there. But I take the majority of most of the dead roots. A few is not, not that bad, but if you can avoid it, obviously that's always better. There we go. Yeah, I think this is looking f pretty fine, actually. Let me lift it one more time. Yeah, some pieces fell on the old roots. Here's a very dry part. Let me cut it off. Like that. Some older dead bits over here. Bit of vellum in there, here, and there we go. Look at it, beautiful. And it's in growing stage, so that's beautiful. 
So yes, I'm going to uh, clean up a bit and then we uh, will be back and put this beautiful root system in a new pot. Okay, and there uh, we are again. You may recognize it, a very large uh, pl a plant pot, <laughs> a pot and an inner pot. So this can go in there and I like to use the Cintiq as a wix. So that's the black and the gray stuff that you see me using. So that's ready. I have a bucket of uh, pumice here, <laughs> the bigger stuff. And I also saved some older pumice and bits of leka. That is what was in the pot of the orchid. I like to reuse it just uh, for the beneficial bacteria that might be in there, which I would like uh, into this new big pot as well. So that's uh, just a little tip there. You may want to uh, reuse some media uh, because I'm a big believer that beneficial bacteria are there as well. So let's uh, get them in again. Okay, here we go. Um, let's try to uh, get this in this pot again. And here is the orchid itself. Yes, not reaching the ceiling with the spikes. Try to be careful with that a new spike over here. And yeah, this is a bit of a puzzle. But so far, it goes well. And now I don't need to have it in the front of the pot, the orchid, but I will try to lean it backwards so it can grow for quite some years in this pot. As you can see where my hand is, hopefully, yeah, the leaf is in a way. <laughs> so we have some uh, room there to uh, let it grow again. So just, just pushing it back like this. And just checking if everything is in. Yes. So let's do first a layer of the clean pumice. Just dumping it in there like this. Then grab the old stuff we just saved. Put it in there as well. And let me check, how far are we? Ah, you guys, I have an old flower spike there. It's now really going into the pot. I should have taken that off, of course, straight from the beginning, but I did forget, apparently. So, but I still can reach it. There we go. So yeah, we don't want that in our pots, of course. Look at this, a very woody stem. That's going to start to rot. So while we edit, I could take this one off as well, over here, next to that beautiful new growth. There we go. Let me quickly check. Yeah, we even have a one here. That is a bit shorter, but it will be in a pot as well. So just this a little piece. There we go. <laughs> off. Okay, let's continue. So yeah, it's all good to check while you are filling your pots up. You never know. Some things might go a little bit uh, off and you can easily adjust it. Like we just did. And just filling it up. And now I'm going to shake it a little bit. To have not too many gaps in there so like we have here i need to uh, put in just a little bit of pumice there even though some air gaps are not a big deal with valves actually i like a few gaps but if they too if they are too big you will not have anything wicking there obviously so the effect of the self-watering the same hydro might be gone so therefore, I like to fill them up a little bit more like this. This is a little bit better, but you can see down there we still have some uh, gaps. That's okay. A bit of extra air around those roots is not a problem at all. There we go. And now I will pull this piece of Cintiq into the pot. We are almost at the, at the edge of the pot. So it can wick up the water to that level. 
same goes here. Let's put the Cintiq in there. Hope you can see it like that. Well, this is looking good, looking beautiful. So you can see here the strains of Cintiq. It will help, like I said, wicking uh, the water up. So yeah, one thing to do now here. I apologize for the noise. The big pebbles I like to use for my fails and cattleyas. Let me quickly do that. You may wonder why I am doing that. Well, I like the look of it, but the pebbles are not wicking, but it helps to keep the moisture, uh, the humidity uh, around this level. Otherwise you might get up a dry top layer. And these pebbles help uh, to pre prevent that. Plus, uh, like I said, I, I like the look of it. That uh, rocky, stony <laughs> look. I really enjoy it. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to floss this. I put it uh, back into this uh, big pot and then uh, we will put it uh, back on a wall again. I will grab a new fail and I will stop, uh, start to continue this. And at the end of the video, I will take the camera and we will have a look at all of them on the, on the fail wall. But for now, I'm going to speed it up and uh, get this uh, job done. So I will uh, see you in a bit. <laughs>
Okay, so you guys, uh, for now, for this day, I had enough of the repottings. I think we did six big ones, and after those, I did three small ones. Those are in this corner. I didn't film those because I think it's uh, very similar, uh, but it's not as impressive as the, as the big ones. So I thought, well, probably I don't need to add those and save a little bit of time. If you uh, f f uh, feel sad about it and you really want to see me the sm uh, repot the smaller fails, let me know. I can do that. It's no problem. It's almost always a fail to uh, repot here. Um, and soon I will have uh, the mini fail updates. I bought a few uh, new mini fails. I'm working on that video that will be from start to finish, how I let them adapt to uh, the semi hydroponic setup as I did with these guys we just saw and uh, behind me. So that video will, uh, will be up in the uh, upcoming weeks, I think. It's not completely done yet. They are still transitioning into the system. But what I did, uh, it's about 10 months ago, and I will uh, link the original video. We also did a similar procedure with my Leodoro uh, family opsis. And I thought, well, maybe it's nice to do an update on that one. So it's an update on a 10 month, months update. Uh, and I have her here. So we can first do that. That's my mic. So yes, I'm back, you guys. I'm sorry, my mic uh, just slips off, like to slip off my shirt. I have, don't know if you can see it, but it falls down sometimes, so I need to uh, need to adjust it. But this is my Aleodoro, and you hopefully can see that it has uh, a basil cakey, and I'm not sure if it was on that uh, already when we did a repot, but anyhow, it looks pretty. Uh, I think it does look pretty, and it has still her spikes on. And yeah, that basil cakey has also a spike. It is this one. This is coming from the cakey here. But anyhow, let's uh, get it out of the pot. I need to put it down again because it's very heavy. And I hope my mic will not fall off this time. <laughs> and let's get some water out of the pot first. Otherwise it will make a, uh, a mess. Let's look at this. So we see some darker spots there, but as you can see, they are still green. So that's okay. There are all the roots. And we have some roots even here down in the bottom of the pot. I have a growing tip over here. And we have growing tips over here. Let's just turn this around and even more over here. Whoops, let me uh, get behind the tripod. Here we have a tip, and there, and there, and there. So that's uh, this one is really doing well. These were the earlier roots that are uh, started to adapt. And as you can see, some just take up a little bit of darker color, dark green color, some bit of black stuff there. But it's okay, they're still growing and working fine. And this is how it looks from above. I didn't have the big pebbles back in the days, but I did found similar uh, pebbles, same as this one, they're just a bit larger and I liked it uh, for my fails and my cat layer types. But this is uh, what we did 10 months ago. Like I said, a similar approach. I'm going to put it down because it's very heavy. <laughs> and yes, I did get a question then, I'm not sure from whom, but um, about the area roots. Yeah, my mic is sticking. <laughs> About the arrow roots. Yes, I do like them. I do like the look of them. I have a few here in the back. I hope you can see still on there. So if I don't have to up on them, I don't. Because I, like I said, I really enjoy the look of it. But in these cases, I can use them and I sort of need to use them because those aerial roots are the newest roots of the orchid. And I want to continue growing it for several years, of course, in this system. So therefore, I like to use the aerial roots. And it will create new uh, roots and uh, probably those will become aerial again. And we can do the similar thing, a similar thing probably in a few years. And that reminds me of a thing that I just wanted to mention in this video as well. I see it's from time to time on Facebook or on YouTube, people saying that after two years, two and a half years, a semi-hydroponic system doesn't really work for their orchids. Um, and 
I think it's good to know because these we just saw, I tried to put in uh, the years uh, how, how long they were growing in the setup, but it, it did vary from three years up to four and a half years in the system without flushing and uh, just growing continually in the system, like I said, and I didn't have to repot them earlier on because of the, the way we grow, or, or at least I do in the semi-hydroponic setup, and that is with inorganic media. So I don't have a rotting media going on. But that means that the system can work. So it's not the, necessarily the system that doesn't work for orchids, if you ask me. But maybe the appro approach of the grower him, uh, him or herself, or the climate, of course. There's so many factors that, that uh, do uh, have their influence and big influences on, on the way you grow, but that not, not mean that necessarily it's the semi-hydroponic. It can go downwards in every setup, in bark, in moss or mounds. It just depends on, on if the system is suiting your life uh, and you can take up the needs that a, a certain system basically acquires to let your uh, orchids uh, grow very well and even flourish. So for me, I can think I can say, uh, and, and by how my orchids do overall, that this system works for me. It suits my life, my, my working day life, and it also suits the, the environment and the orchid itself. So it's still semi-hydroponic after uh, four and a half, about five years for most of them. So it's doable, but if something is wrong, I, I, I think it might have to do with a pH problem, which I had in the beginning as well, even though you, you flush them all the time. I'm just curious, you know, I'm just curious to know what happened. Why doesn't work a system for a particular grower? And especially the ones that, that did take off very well, uh, the plants did take off very well in their care, I should say. And then at a certain amount, amount of time, like they said, about two and two and a half years, they stop uh, growing, they go downwards, because that sounds very similar. And that is a problem that I had. You probably heard me say it, That's a, that was a pH problem. And my solution to it is the uh, powder, the calcium and magnesium powder. Since I started using that product, uh, my, all my problems in that area are gone. As long as I keep checking my reservoirs, as long as I keep on top of it and know what ha is happening. So that is, um, that is what I do now and it works pretty fine and that really uh, stimulated me to make these videos. Just to share, I'm not saying this is a magical setup, it works for me and I really, really enjoy it and uh, I really enjoy making videos and I really enjoy you guys watching these videos, leaving your comments and asking your questions. But yeah, I just wanted to put it out there, out there because it, it didn't felt right. It's, it's, it's not the system in this case, it's not the system. Or um, maybe the environment uh, makes it impossible to grow in the system, but that, necessarily, that not necessarily means that the system is wrong. That's, that's how I should put it. Okay, you guys, I just wanted to get it out there. I hope you don't mind. But anyhow, um, I promised you guys I would uh, take also the camera uh, in my hand and have a close up. So that's what we're going to do now. Let's have a look at uh, the ones that we just uh, repotted. So, so yes, you guys, here we are at the wall again. Yeah, I really, really love the look of it. So yeah, big pots, big pots, a lot of big pots. And I did get some comments uh, from, my, uh, from some of the viewers about the uh, structure where their pet pots are hanging on. It's, it's safe. Uh, as far as I can judge it, uh, it will not fall down. <laughs> so let's hope it doesn't. But yeah, it really is uh, secure. So I think uh, there's always a little bit of movement here, of course. But yeah, it's, it's a lot of weight adding on, on the structure, I know. But so far, uh, it's, it looks uh, good. So I, uh, it should be fine. <clears throat> <laughs> so those three up there, we just uh, did. Um, let me zoom in a little bit. I hope you can see them fairly clear. Yeah, beautiful, right? I really, really love the look of it. Let me zoom in a little bit more so you can see the pebbles there. Really love the look, like I said. And then we have here the Maya that was in bloom, or is in bloom. It's down over here. Also looking well. Then we have that one. 
and that one I did off camera and this one so yeah, you can see this one is uh, fairly above the pot <laughs> because it has quite some uh, roots but I didn't have the bigger pots anymore but yeah because these uh, fells do grow the airy roots fairly easy in my care and they uh, will find a way into the pot into the media again that will be fine and I have one up here we just did today that is not uh, the one that's in bloom it's the, that one <laughs> But it has uh, quite some spikes. So yeah, and sometimes it does look a little bit funny because the spikes were in a previous, in a, a different setup, of course, a different situation. So they may may look a, a bit funny, but they will. The next spikes will uh, lean over nicely, more nicely uh, again. Whoops. Uh, next time, of course, like these spikes are uh, really in behind. This, this one we did uh, the previous uh, massive repot session as we did those and someday i thought it would be nice to do a sort of update on these guys as well but that's for a later video i think overall it took me about uh, two and a half two and a half hours to repot uh, nine of these orchids so three small ones and six one six bigger six six bigger ones on camera and yeah with including the preparation time so the pots and etc so yeah it's, it takes a bit of time but if you come to think about it it's not really that much because I, I i don't have to clean the roots as thoroughly because of the setup anyhow this is it for the second part and now i hope i can do with another four years at least with these big ones so i don't think i have if uh, big repots on my fails coming up again pretty soon maybe over here we have still some in the smaller pots who knows but i think those will uh, are fine for now but you can see i have several uh, bigger pots on uh, on the fails here so anyhow as usual thank you so much for watching of course and if you have any questions please leave them in the comment section below May, uh, maybe you want to give this video a like or share it. It would be even uh, even great as well, of course. I keep forgetting to adding that. <laughs> but I love it, of course. And uh, as usual, if you have any questions... Oh, I already said that. Leave it in the comment section. Yes, I did. <laughs> so it's time for a break, you guys. <laughs> Thank you for watching. And I really hope to see you at one of my next videos. Bye-bye. Uh, <laughs>